Hello, and welcome to the GRACE podcast series. My name is Denise Brock, and I am the Operations Director for the Global Resource for Advancing Cancer Education, or GRACE. In this podcast series, we interview patients, advocates, and healthcare professionals to provide the most updated information for our community and to highlight important issues facing those dealing with a cancer diagnosis. We hope you find this information valuable. For questions or comments, please visit us at cancergrace.org. So some additional considerations and questions for targeted therapy before surgery. I think the likely outcome here is that we're going to see appropriate targeted therapy leading to effective tumor shrinkage, which can hopefully improve the ability for patients to get a complete tumor removal with their surgery and perhaps less complex surgeries. So will this change practice? Will this lead to FDA approval? I think, you know, we, we need to see. Targeted therapy before surgery is unlikely to replace the need for continuation of targeted therapy after surgery. Uh, you know, due to the pathologic outcomes that we've seen, I think that uh, targeted therapy will need to be continued after surgery as well. Uh, if results of Neoadora are positive, uh, so giving targeted therapy before surgery, will we extrapolate this approach with other driver mutations? I think that remains to be seen. How will chemotherapy be sequenced? Is there still a role for stage two and three? I think there likely is, but we need to see that. And then, as I mentioned before, immunotherapy-based approaches in the perioperative setting should not be pursued for most patients, though mutation subtypes, smoking history, other factors may play a role here. So in the remaining moments, I want to touch briefly on locally advanced unresectable lung cancer with a driver mutation. So our standard of care for patients with locally advanced lung cancer who can't get surgery is to give curative intent chemotherapy with radiation, uh, followed by immunotherapy. That was shown in the large phase three Pacific trial that randomized patients after chemo radiation to dervalumab immunotherapy or placebo. And these are the outcomes from that trial. And uh, I won't go into the detail, but the blue lines were the immunotherapy and you could see both in time to cancer coming back, which is progression-free survival, I should say time to cancer growing, progression-free survival or overall survival, we saw improvement with immunotherapy. But importantly, the study did not assess driver mutation status of patients. And in the lung cancer community, I think we were all a little skeptical of the immunotherapy benefit in the, this approach. Now, there is limited data here. Um, this is a subgroup analysis from this trial of EGFR mutated patients, and I'm sure it's hard to see, but only 24 patients with EGFR mutations received Dervalumab and 11 received placebo. But with that being said, there, there was not a clear sign of clinical benefit with the addition of Dervalumab for progression-free or overall survival. Thank you again for joining us. This podcast was made possible by the generosity of sponsorship from our friends at Lilly and Exalexis. Please like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Send us feedback, share your story, donate and visit us for more information at cancergrace.org. Thank you for listening.